everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new to this channel and haven't been following our adventures up to now, then you'll typically find us vlogging our various travels as we go around the world. But this series of videos is going to be a little bit different because as we've gone through each of the countries we've visited so far, we've noticed there's been a few things that are a little bit different to what we're accustomed to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this YouTube channel is to share our travel experiences in the hopes of inspiring other people to travel more. With that, we're going to provide you with some tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way in each of the countries that we visited, so that if you ever want to go to the same places, you'll be armed with some helpful information and knowledge that will make planning and navigating around a little bit easier. Today's video is going to be focused on traveling around Hong Kong. Obviously, Hong Kong is only a small place, so apologies if this list seems a little bit on the short side. We hope that you find these useful. Now, when we say Hong Kong, I know a lot of people probably think, isn't that part of China? So isn't it really difficult to get into and all of that kind of thing? Well, technically, Hong Kong is part of China, but it is listed as a special administrative region of China, much in the same way as with Macau, which is another one. What this means is that while it is technically a part of China, then it actually has its own administrative, legal and judicial systems in comparison to the mainland, which give it a fair amount of autonomy. And one of the ways in which it expresses its own autonomy is through visa requirements. While getting a visa into China is notoriously difficult, Hong Kong is actually incredibly easy. The vast majority of passports that one can hold allow you to get into Hong Kong visa-free for a fair length of time. I believe for Canadian citizens, it's up to three months, but for UK citizens, then it's up to six as a visitor. So obviously do check with regards to your own passport, but when you're trying to check the visa requirements, check for Hong Kong rather than China, because it's very likely that the visa requirements are gonna be different. Hong Kong is an interesting country in that it is both very modern, but yet also very traditional. So it's a really nice mix. In terms of payment, credit cards are accepted in most places. However, you do still need to carry cash, in particular for market stalls, very local eateries, and also public transportation. When you go on the government website for Hong Kong, then they will tell you that the water is safe to drink there. However, you do need to take care if you're staying in an older building because the plumbing may have not got updated in line with the more modern buildings that you see in Hong Kong. With that, then generally speaking, bottled water is the soundest investment. And the good news is in most of the places that you're gonna be staying, then typically they will provide a water cooler or a means of refilling your bottle with no risks. So definitely do take advantage of that. It's pretty easy to navigate your way around Hong Kong because most of the signs are in English as well as in traditional Chinese characters. When you're flying into Hong Kong, then Hong Kong Airport is pretty amazing. We absolutely loved it. It's a gigantic building with a lot of good facilities. However, the problem with Hong Kong's airport is that it is almost completely isolated from the rest of the city save for one solitary transport link, and that is the airport express train that takes you in. Because this is the only way that you can get in, then you will find yourself probably needing to pay a quite pretty penny in order to get your airport transfer. However, that is a little bit of a way in which you can save money. Typically, if you were to just go to a ticket machine and try and go through the whole process without speaking to a human being, then you may find yourself being charged quite a lot of money. However, it is worth noting that if you are not a solo traveler and you are traveling with more than one other person, then it's quite possible you may even be able to get a group ticket, which will give you a discount per ticket in order to get you in. So it is 100% worth going up to the ticket counter and asking a member of staff what they can do for you by way of group rates, and you should get a more favorable price on your tickets. And it is worth noting that a group 
counts for two plus people. So we were able to take full advantage of it and it was definitely the most cost effective way for us to get in. Grab and other rideshare apps and taxis are still available. However, obviously you may be paying quite a lot more for that more personalized service. Once you get into the city, the public transportation in Hong Kong is absolutely fantastic and it will take you wherever you need to go. The subway or metro, whatever you want to call it, serves quite a vast area and will take you to all of the top tourist attractions that you wish to go to. That being said, the city is also quite walkable, so that is another consideration if you don't want to spend the money on public transportation. When you do choose to use the metro and subway to get yourself from one place to another, then the ticket machines are very intuitive and easy to use. But just keep in mind that you will need to have cash on you to purchase a ticket for every journey that you make. Eating out in Hong Kong can be quite expensive if you're not careful. However, the good news is that there are a number of more local eateries and cheaper ways to be able to eat out if you so wish. The likes of local bakeries, convenience stores, as well as hawker centers are actually very good ways to eat local cuisine on the cheap. Another thing that took us by surprise is just how frequently you will actually be able to see sushi takeout shops. And these are generally pretty reasonably priced. You can get quite hearty meals for even less than you would expect to pay in the likes of North America and Europe. So if you're wanting to still enjoy a nice meal, albeit a not traditional one, and you are trying to pinch pennies, then maybe that's a consideration instead. Nick did mention that the hawker centers as well as local eateries are some of the cheapest and most affordable ways to try local Hong Kong food. And we did take advantage of that while we were there. So some of our recommendations for breakfast would be pineapple bread. We went to a bakery and had that. One of our favorite breakfasts was at a very, very busy local eatery diner where we had to line up and you can get Hong Kong style French toast and macaroni soup for breakfast and both were absolutely amazing. You could also try wife cakes, sweet and sour pork, wontons, and hargao, which are shrimp dumplings. I'm sure there are so many more foods, but these are just the ones that we recommend and can think of off the top of our heads. But one of the drinks you should definitely try while there, and it comes with breakfast, or if you're at like a bakery, it's very easy to get, is milk tea. Definitely try that. One of the major sights of Hong Kong, and it gets you one of the best vistas of the city, is going up Victoria Peak. And generally to get up to the top, you have two different options. The first one is to take the funicular up, and this isn't without cost. We had a look at the overall cost of it, and I can't remember the exact quote in Hong Kong dollars for it, but certainly it was in the ballpark of about 15 to 20 Canadian dollars per person, depending on whether you wanted it one way or return. However, it is worth noting that actually, if you wanted to hike up there instead, then I actually used the term hiking kind of loosely because it really wasn't that difficult in comparison to other places where we've hiked. It does say that it'll take you about an hour to get up there, but if you are generally comfortable with hiking, then it will probably take you a fraction of the time. It took us about half the time in total going up and down. So don't be put off by what you read. But overall, because of the fact that you also get to stop at a number of other vistas along the way, which you might not necessarily get on the funicular, if you are looking to save yourself a bit of extra money, then hiking up there would be what we would recommend. It is also worth noting that once you get up to the summit, then there are a couple of little malls just full of restaurants and souvenir shops. Each of these is quite expensive and I would probably go as far as to say just a little bit more expensive than the same thing that you would get in Hong Kong City itself. So that is another thing to bear in mind. Unless budget is no issue for you, we wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a lunch spot if you're on a budget. One of the other really popular things to do in Hong Kong is to go to the Polin Monastery, which is where the famous 
big, large Buddha is located. You can easily take the subway to Poland Monastery as it is located on the metro system. However, once you arrive at that subway station, you either have to take a cable car, which is very popular and you will see advertised everywhere. But there is another way to get there and it is cheaper. When we were there, the cable car was actually closed and so we were forced to take the bus to Poland Monastery. But prior to that, we had been intending to take the cable car to Poland Monastery. And the only reason we know of this cheaper option is because we were forced into it due to circumstance. So located right next to the cable car, you can also get bus number 23 that will take you to Poland Monastery. And I think that one of the advantages to taking the bus is that you get all of these incredible vistas from all around the island because it is very hilly and winding. So the bus kind of goes along these switchbacks and it really does make for some beautiful scenery. The one thing to know is that you need to have exact change for this bus. So again, it is cash based and they cannot make change for you. So fortunately, when you get to Poland Monastery, as well as very close to the subway station, there is a 7-Eleven where you could easily go in and buy something for a dollar or two dollars, whatever it might be, so that you can make change. But it's just definitely something to be aware of. And that makes up our short but sweet list concerning Hong Kong. We hope that what we have provided you is helpful, but we do completely recognize that it is not an exhaustive list and that there are plenty of things that you may want to know about Hong Kong or that you already know that we've missed off of this list. Therefore, if you have any further questions or you have a recommendation yourself, then feel free to add them in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.